because it was, it was just too big. I couldn't get in and out of it. So, and neither could Diane. She was having a hard time. And so anyway, I called them on Saturday and I said, I just, you know, I can't do this car. And they said, well, we don't have anything else. They said, call us tomorrow and we'll see what we got tomorrow. So on Sunday, I called them and she said, well, if you can hurry up and get here, I have a, a uh, the other one was a, was a Chevy Tahoe. And she said, we've got this uh, Dodge Journey. I said, okay, I'll be right there. So I got out there and got it. And they, you know, gave me the keys and everything. And I left, <coughs> never thinking thing about it. So, you know, I've had the car a month. Now all the police that have seen me, I mean, you know, I'm on the roads every day. I can't tell you the cops I've seen here in Bradenton. And they never noticed one thing about this car. This morning, they called me and tell me my car is ready. So I said, I'll be right there. I'll take this uh, rental car over. So I took the rental car over and I went in and they were really busy. And the woman says, uh, are you bringing a car back or are you getting one? I said, no, I said, I'm bringing one back. She said, what is it? And I said, it's a Dodge Journey. She said, it's not the stolen Dodge Journey. She said, are you bringing back the car that was stolen? I said, ma'am, I didn't steal this car. I said, I came in here and they gave it to me. And so they looked on the thing and they said, we have no record of this car being given to you. None whatsoever. They said, do you know that the police, we even filed a report with the police that this car had been stolen. And I'm surprised you weren't picked up. I said, well, I'm telling you, I said, I serve a God that takes care of me. And I just thank the Lord for taking care of me because I would have really been embarrassed, especially if Diane wouldn't come up me, you know, or something. Or if I'd have had to call Diane and say, come get me out of jail. But they still, they went through all their records. They said, we have went through these records. We have went through our computers. We can find no trace of giving you this car. My, my, my. But thank God Hallelujah. I got out of it. <laughs> Another miracle. Praise God. Another miracle. Sister Mary Ann, Sister Mary Thompson, uh, a miracle for her. That car has been so obvious, it's been parked on that church parking lot. I'm glad they didn't surround the church. <laughs> Come down and, uh, and, you know, get everybody in, <laughs> everybody in jail concerning the brain of gospel. Uh, God is good all the time. Oh, and, uh, thank God they have their Dodge journey back and you have your car and no repercussions because the Lord surely was with you. So we can thank God for it. God's good to us all the time, isn't he, children of God and brethren around me tonight. And uh, it's good to know that uh, I think that every time I hear a testimony about uh, what God has done for one of the saints and has done for me and my life, my family, be involved, or yours, 
and there's some particular circumstances about it that uh, if if God had not been on our side, if the Lord had not been watching over us, we could have, we may have been in some real trouble Amen. in our life. Uh, not intentionally, not as evildoers, not as troublemakers, uh, but circumstances of life can change around so quick. I read the story of a man last night um, before I went to bed that served uh, nearly 38 years in prison for a crime he did not commit and uh, was caught up in a series of circumstances until finally they put him in jail and prison and he spent a good part of his life behind bars and was totally innocent, um, mistaken identity, people saying that he resembled, he looked like, he might have been. The car, he was driving similar to the car involved. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, it can happen to anyone, uh, even the most innocent, and even God's children. But then we know the same God that delivered uh, Joseph from the prison he was in, of Pharaoh's prison, uh, Joseph was freed, and uh, they did not win. The enemy did not win. Pharaoh's wife, the false accuser, did not win. And um, Joseph's false brethren, he lived among false brethren, his own brethren, and they uh, told his father that he'd been killed, and uh, they smeared the coat of many colors and was woven for Joseph and uh, smeared it with the blood of an animal. And of course in those days the forensic um, science was not as it is today, so they had no way of checking that to see if that was animal blood, human blood. But they convinced Jacob that his son was dead. And um, then God reunited that boy with his father and justified <coughs> Joseph for his life as an example, of course, of Christ. Joseph is a picture of Christ in the scriptures and um, justified him and then uh, brought him out of prison. God delivered uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego uh, from the prison they were put in for not worshiping a false god and bowing down to false images of Nebuchadnezzar's making. Yet God, God saw them and God determined in his counsel that he would deliver them. And he did deliver them. Uh, he delivered Peter from prison. Uh, past four quarterdons of soldiers, which was uh, 48 uh, armed Roman legionnaires uh, that were standing guard over Peter, but the angel smote them all and uh, smote the chains and, and the irons that barred the door, and Peter walked out because uh, uh, an angel of God was with him. And uh, God freed Peter from that circumstance and uh, let him be free. God freed Paul in the prison with Silas when they were singing songs at midnight and was praising God, <coughs> worshiping God, and shook the jail down and even allowed the jailer to be baptized at his house because God justified Paul and Silas. Right, so the same God that did that justified you, Sister Mary. That was a very serious moment. He could have been charged for stealing that automobile. There might have been uh, dire circumstances arise from that uh, because they had no records, the, the automobile was missing, someone goofed up in the paperwork of that company and did not do their job properly or either filed it somewhere they couldn't find it or didn't carry out the, the work they were to do and signing that car to you. However it was, God did not allow the hand of man uh, to come down on you. 
That's something to praise God for. That's something to praise God for. And uh, I give God the praise because she's a she's born of my bone. If that would happen to her, it would affect me. If that would happen to Sister Mary, it would affect every member of this assembly because we are bone of each other's bone. We are flesh of each other's flesh. And uh, what happens to one affects the other. If this truly is the body of Christ, and I believe it is, I was told it was. I came in under James Roberts, uh, Brother Jim Roberts, and he taught me that I didn't have to join a church. That I was born of the Holy Ghost. I was washed in the blood. My name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I repented of my sins and confessed my sins and confessed Christ. My pastor taught me, Brother Robert said, uh, son, you don't have to join a church. The Lord has added you to the church, just like he did in the book of Acts. And the Lord uh, added daily to the church, such as should be saved. The Lord, the Lord added, the Lord added. Uh, 3,000 came in after the day of Pentecost. They were added. 5,000 came in. They were added. Um, you're added. God is a God that can calculate, multiply. Uh, he knows uh, trigonometry. Uh, he knows uh, mathematics beyond Einstein or any great mind that ever lived. God knows more than Einstein ever knew. Right. God knows more than any other brilliant science uh, ever knew, mathematician. Uh, so God added me to the church and made me bone of that little assembly on Manatee Avenue in 1945 um, when God let me get to that little brave band of people with their guitars and their tambourines and their instruments of praise a banjo, they had banjo and two banjos or so had an accordion and some guitars and uh, tambourines and uh, they worshipped God with those tambourines and they would worship God with those guitars and they, they would worship God with those instruments they had. And the Lord added me to that church in 1945. I became a part of what was known as the Gospel of Peace mission, later to become Gospel Chapel, then Gospel Tabernacle. Uh, and the Lord added me. I became a part. Uh, he added me so much that I've never been able to be free from being a part of the body of Christ. The family of God. See, the example um, in the book of uh, Kings, is it? The record of Elisha, that is Elijah and Elisha. Um, when Elijah was ready to go <coughs> and had finished his ministry, um, he, he um, uh, was ready to go. His ministry was over. And Elijah uh, knew that Elisha must follow him. And he, he trained Elisha. And he, he said, uh, you stay here at uh, Gilgal. Uh, and, and in the beginning, that was the first place uh, that uh, Elijah told Elisha to stay. He said, uh, you stay here. And that, of course, Gilgal was the beginning of the uh, hill of um, Forskin. Please, uh, and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this allergy bothers me when I get to speak of the first wound of Praise the Lord. And uh, Eli Elijah said to Elisha, you stay here because um, I'm going to go away. And Elisha, though, caught by revelation. You know, if that's the only real way yep. the body of Christ operates right. is by revelation. Amen. If you don't learn that code, that's a code. Oh uh, the Holy Ghost gives you a code. Yes. And you're spiritual with that code. And you learn to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. You learn to understand what the Lord is saying to his people. The difference in a wise saying 
and an unwise saint in the assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ, the difference in a child of God that grows and becomes part of wisdom hath built in her house uh, in Proverbs 9. But wisdom <coughs> has built in her house. Wisdom there is the church. Wisdom is the knowledge of God in the church. Uh, if you have wisdom, you'll build the house of the Lord. Yes. If you don't have wisdom, you can't build the house of the Lord. Uh, the tool of trade that you have as a child of God in a New Testament assembly that separates you from the dumb and the silent and the unknowing and those that have no wisdom, have no understanding, can never be pillars in the house of God, can never be steady, can never be defended upon, uh, to keep the house of God. I'm talking about people, talking about the church. Um, the difference is that if you get the spirit of revelation, and only the Holy Ghost can give you that. Only the Holy Ghost can give you that gift. That's a gift. That's the gift of the Spirit. And um, it leads to other gifts in your life. You get the gift of wisdom, understanding uh, what's going on around you, what's going on in the church. Uh, when someone's talking, are they talking biblical truth? Or are they talking a lie? Because you'll hear both. In the, in, in the church, you'll hear a lie and you'll hear the truth. Not everybody says the truth in the church. Not every preacher that preaches tells the truth. Brother Marlowe, that's shocking. That preachers would tell a lie. Well, what are false prophets? Are they not liars? I said, are they false prophets? Are they not liars? See? Because if he's a false prophet, he isn't telling the truth, is he? So that makes him a liar, doesn't it? And, and, uh, and so everybody doesn't tell the truth that stands behind his pulpit, holds these pages of the Holy Book, uh, looks good in a suit. Uh, parts their hair right, um, seems to be an orator, uh, seems to be a speaker. Uh, so how do you know? How would you know uh, that a man is telling you the truth if you don't have the quickening of the Holy Ghost? The quickening, the revelation of the Holy Ghost. And only God can give you that through the Holy Ghost. That's why it's necessary for you to have the Holy Ghost. And if you, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you should strive and tarry and seek God until you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not a faith, not a put on, not somebody saying dad, dad, mama, uh, you know, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, uh, but uh, shaking you, massaging you, uh, uh, you know, doing, moving your head. No, you get the experience of the Holy Ghost coming in you into your being, into your temple, and living there, abiding there, and giving you wisdom so that when uh, you're hearing the word of God, you're able to discern that's the truth. That's the truth. That's not the truth. That's the truth. Uh, the word of God teaches you that. And, and so uh, th this, um, when, when uh, Elijah uh, we should give me that scripture or someone. Second what, that scripture? Second Kings 2. Second Kings 2. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, the first place, uh, the first place that he went uh, was uh, was Gilgal, wasn't it? That, that, that's where they that, that's where they left. Uh, they left uh, Gilgal. Second Kings 2. Did you? Uh, did you say? Yes, sir. Begin with verse one. Uh, yes, Second Kings. Uh, let's look at that, and uh, so we can get some scripture here uh, for what we're saying, and uh, it's of the word of God. And he said, uh, and it came to pass when the Lord, I'm reading 2 Kings 2 now, and 1, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Why did they leave Gilgal? Gilgal, when they came over, when Joshua led them over Jordan, um, and not the Red Sea, but when Joshua led them over Jordan, he said, up and sanctify yourselves, 
and we're going to circumcise all of those that were not circumcised in the wilderness. We're going to circumcise you here at and Gilgal means the hill of foreskins. The hill of foreskins. That's what the Gilgal means. And it was it was there that every one of them, uh, because the only two living that was with them that when they left Egypt yes. was uh, Caleb and Joshua. Uh, they, they, they were the living uh, of, of the original group uh, that was with them. There were thousands of Israelites born in the wilderness and they were never circumcised. And so he said, uh, all right, uh, circumcise these people. And it was the hill of foreskins and so there's where the people were sanctified. If you know somewhere in your religious experience and mine, and my experience with God, I just can't sing about going to heaven. I just can't believe I'm going there someday. I just can't believe that God is gonna let me live beyond the grave. I just can't do that by saying, I'm gonna do it. I'll do it whether they like it or not. I'll do it whether anybody likes it or not, no. Oh, somewhere there must be a cutting of the foreskin, the circumcising of your heart with the Word of God. Yes, sir. Uh, with the Word of God. Uh, Paul calls it in the book of Colossians, the circumcision made without hands. Without See, the natural hand circumcised the male child, the male boy child in Israel. But the circumcision of the Holy Ghost is not the circumcision with hands. It, it, that, that's the cutting of the foreskin of your heart so when the blood of Christ sanctifies you and sets you apart from the world. You consecrate your temple to God and present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, Romans 12, which is your reasonable sacrifice. When you do that, God, and you do that over a process of time, the knife, the sword, the Word of God doesn't cut you, uh, circumcise you all at once. Uh, it may be some of that may take place in this message. Or it may take place in the message Brother Carlton would minister, or Brother Reynolds would minister. See, circumcision isn't done instantly in the Spirit or in the Word. It's over a period of time. Yeah. That's why we can't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Yeah. That's why we have to come back and back and back. We have to come back and back because the knife cuts, the knife cuts, the sword turns, and there's little by little, there's a cutting away of the flesh cover uh, of man. That's, that's, that's our circumcision is the cutting away of the flesh cover that's given you at birth, uh, of, 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 of birth, of creation. And and that uh, the knife uh, cuts the foreskin and allows uh, that uh, the foreskin to be cut. Uh, uh, that was used as a mode or a picture of sanctifying every male child uh, in Israel on the eighth day. Uh, now that's also a picture. Uh, now in, uh, there's neither male nor female, bond or free, Greek nor Jew, in Christ. So when I'm addressing you as a woman, I'm addressing you as a son of God. Uh, I'm, I'm addressing you as a man, I'm addressing you as a son of God. Because in Christ, in Christ, there's neither male nor female. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's just one gender. In Christ, there's one gender in the flesh. Uh, there's a male, female gender. But in Christ, there's only one gender, and that is sons of God. And every son of God has to be sanctified or the foreskin of the flesh, the endemic nature of the first Adam, uh, the carnal mind has to be cut with the word of God so that the foreskin is loose and that covering is loose. And then there's a freedom, there's a freedom in Christ then of your heart with God's heart. Uh, so. Uh, when, when, and this picture here, when they left Gilgal, uh, Elijah, Elijah was testing Elisha. Uh, Elijah knew that Elisha, seeing the foreknowledge of God and the predestinated will of God, Elijah knew that Elisha would follow him. But he had to hear Elisha committing that. 
See, God may know that you will follow him, but you have to verbally and spiritually commit. And by action, you have to present your body a living sacrifice. Yes. You have to show yes. as a child of God by action, by action, that you're going to follow. Yes. That you're going to leave the hill of four sin, going to leave hill down. And of course, Elisha, when, when he said uh, here in verse uh, uh, tarry here. Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. Now Bethel was the holy place. Bethel was the place of the angels, visitation of Jacob. Uh, Bethel is where the angels visited Jacob. Bethel is where his thigh was uh, taken out of joint. Uh, and, and, and every one of us has to leave Gilgal at some point and follow. The hardest thing for the church to do in this hour that we're living in, because it's a carnal hour. People don't fast and pray anymore. There's little fasting and prayer going on in the church collectively as a whole. I'm not condemning it. I'm just sure there isn't. See, fasting and prayer is almost extinct in the Christian church right now. And you know that, and I know that, and we're aware of that, uh, that fasting and prayer is almost extinct in the Christian church. And yet Jesus said, of some spirits, people wonder why they can't get rid of a spirit. They can't get rid of a certain spirit. I can get, why can't I get rid of a certain attitude? Did you fast? Did you pray? Did the men that prayed for you fast and pray? Did the ministry fast and pray? See? Um, because uh, uh, Jesus said this kind, the demoniac spirit, yes. and I believe in demons, yes. and if you don't believe in demons, you haven't read the scriptures. That's right. And if you don't believe in demoniac spirit, you haven't read the scriptures. See, that's outside the carnal mind. Yes, sir. That's separate from the carnal mind. Right. The carnal mind is one thing, and a demoniac spirit is a separate thing. Yes, uh, a, a carnal mind is bad enough. But you get to the place where you're demon possessed, yep. you've got a problem. Yep. I've got a problem. Yep. Uh, but, but here, uh, uh, we, we have to, uh, we, we have to um, move on. See, and, 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 and if we've been to Gilgal, and we've had the knife applied, and we've cut the foreskin of our uh, mental attitude, our spirit, then we have to go on to Bethel because the hip has to be taken out of joint. See, um, let me give that scripture. I want it in Hebrews. For the word of God, but the word of God is quick. Four and twelve. Is that Hebrews four and twelve? Uh, Hebrews four and twelve. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And you know, when I'm teaching like this, and another man of God is teaching like this, I'm not the evangelist jumping up and down right now. I do that. I I, I can preach evangelistically. Uh, there's more than one gift that works in my life. But when I'm teaching like this, if you go back over this CD, you would be in Bible college because you can attend some Bible colleges uh, that doesn't teach what I'm teaching right now. They don't teach this deep. They don't, go, they don't know how can they teach. How, do they, how can they teach when they don't know? Some of our elders here can make Bible school professors look like Sunday school teachers if they were around them. Right. Because of the word of God. Because uh, this sword is sharp. For the word of God is quick. 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 Powerful. Sharp. 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 And any two of your sword piercing even. That's why we need to get in the Holy Ghost assembly in these last days. Where all five of those gifts can function, but the gift of teaching must not them. The apostolic gift of planning must function in a church. And you can enjoy an evangelist, but you better sit and listen to a teacher. When that man is teaching, his gift is all the other different. He, isn't, he, he doesn't have you running down. He's not out there anointing everybody with oil, necessarily. But if you listen to what the, the teacher is saying, uh, he's planning you. He's putting the word of God in you. And he's anointed with that anointing of teaching. Yes, and, 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 and God 
uh, let me go back to the scripture, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints. See, Jacob's joint was out. And the angel knocked his joint out. And uh, uh, Jacob's joint was out of place when he wrestled with that angel. Yes. But when you wrestle with a messenger from God, that messenger from God with the word of God should get your joints out, yes. should take you out uh, where they don't cooperate. See, my, my joints cooperate and I walk. But if God wants to cripple me, and he wanted to cripple Jacob, God wanted Jacob to walk with a limp. God wanted Jacob to walk with a limp because Jacob was absolutely a chosen vessel, a chosen man of God, and God wanted him to walk with a limp. And he crippled Jacob so that Jacob was never the same he was a peculiar man in his walk. And God wants to take and literally, that is spiritually, unjoin us. Uh, so we go to Bethlehem, where the Word of God Whoa. then begins to take our joints apart of the flesh, our will, uh, our, our, our desire to go here, do this, conquer this, be this, be a part of that. Uh, he takes you out of the world, separates you from the world, makes you peculiar, makes you a chosen vessel. Uh, uh, because he's leading you uh, to Bethel. And of course, Elijah said, uh, you tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. There is no hope for any person in the New Testament church, including Brother Marlowe, ministry and saints, if we won't follow the next step God has for us. Amen, brother. See, if we stay, if, Eli if Elisha would have said, no, I'm going to stay at Gilgal. I'm not following you, Elijah. I'm going far enough with you. Why would I go with you to the next place? Bethel, I'm here with you at uh, Gilgal. Some, uh, I, I watch people in the church. Uh, uh, they, they, they lose the desire to study. They do away with their study. They quit studying. They quit praying. I watch young men in the church. I watch, uh, I watch young women in the church. I watch uh, mature women, mature men. That they quit studying. They quit praying. They quit trying to understand what it takes to build, create a New Testament church. Where their place is in it. Where their pillar would be in the church. What God will want them to do. How God will want them to be a gift in that church and be a part of that church and be a pillar, a part of the house of God. And I've watched them just stop and lose desire and become nonchalant, dilatory. And, and they fall back and fall away. And the desire, and you, you just see them, uh, their, their arms used to go up like this, but then it got like that. And, and they used to be active and smiling and reading and encouraging everybody and, and saying a good word and studying the word of God. And then suddenly they're, they're going back like this. They're going back. Uh, their arms are going down. See, but, but that's the spirit that Elisha could have had if he had uh, stopped right there. Yeah. See? But we're to run this race. Yeah. Isn't that what the scripture says? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To run this race of patience. Yeah. See then, Hebrews 12, 1, that we're encompassed about, we're, we're surrounded, we're surrounded. Did you know I'm surrounded tonight? Someone said, oh, there's just a few in the church. I beg to differ with you, brother. I've got record of thousands and thousands of saints, of overcomers, of men and women that live for God. Read the 11th uh, chapter of, of uh, Hebrews for one. Praise God. Yep. Praise God. Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and we're encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside. Would you say that with me? Let us lay aside. Let us lay aside. Well, I thought you didn't have to lay anything aside. He said you did. Paul said you did. 
laying it aside. If you lay something aside, you don't do it anymore. You don't partake of it anymore. You don't go there anymore. You don't live that way anymore. But laying it aside, every weight, every weight, every weight, and these sin that does so easily of itself and run with patience the race that is set before us. See, Elijah was going away and he was testing Elisha to see if Elisha was followed. Now, I'm going to cut this short because I don't want to take the whole Wednesday night. Uh, I, I just want to get started. I want to get started in some pathways. Uh, God is dealing with my heart as a shepherd. Um, I want to be a right shepherd, a good shepherd, an honest shepherd. I don't want to take your place or your place. I really want to find the will of God right now. I want to be in the will of God. I want to do the will of God. There is nothing that will destroy the church any quicker than everybody being satisfied, leveling off, and saying we have it, we've got it, Look at us. No. If we're hungry tonight, the Lord is going to lead us farther. If we're hungry, the Lord is going to lead us on. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a greater day for the church. There's a greater day for you. Don't level off where you are. Don't sit there and die. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't get over. Don't let your flesh swallow you. Don't let your carnal self make you blue and sad and lonely and forsaken and dejected. Get your head up. God can't help you until you get your head up. Amen. You, you can never feed anything until they get their head up. Right. They, they, you, you couldn't feed cattle unless they got their head up. Uh, how can God feed a discouraged church? How can God feed a discouraged Christian? I believe my God wants me to leave Gilgal and go to Bethel. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. 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 I believe my God, just like God wanted Elisha yeah. to follow Elijah from Gilgal where they rolled the uh, foreskin away and they were circumcised, to Bethel where there was another experience awaiting them. Thank God for Elisha. He deserved the double portion. He deserved the double portion. Praise our God. Uh, it, it wasn't a three days that Elisha got uh, from following Elijah. And here the scripture said, uh, look, look what uh, verse uh, 3 said, and the sons of the prophets um, that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, I mean, verse 3, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? I like Elisha's reply. Yeah. I do. I like a man that is positive. I like a woman that is positive. When the devil is trying to trick them, and when somebody is trying to use coyness and, and a little flirtation of the enemy, and trying to use some slick uh, words uh, to get them to cave in, but look here, uh, the sons of the prophet said, don't you, don't you know uh, that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? Why, they slammed Elisha uh, with that thought. Your master's going, don't you know? It's over. Why are you running from Gilgal to Bethel? Why are you uh, running like you are? Don't you know it's over? It's over with, Elisha. Don't you know today is the last day that you're going to have Elijah? And the covering of Elijah? I like the way that Elisha answered just like that. And he said, Yay! My God is a God of yay. Yes! Praise God! Don't fiddle around with a, a cheap answer back to the enemy when they're trying to come at you and discourage you. Don't do that. Uh, you, you fire right back at the enemy. Fire right back at the enemy of your soul. And say, and when he said, don't you know that you're sick? Yay! Yeah. Yes, I know, of course. Don't you know that you're broke? Of course I know I'm broke. Yeah. Don't you know that there's more against you than there is for you? 
Yay! Yes, I know that. And you're not telling me anything. That's the best way in the world to get somebody off your back. Yes, sir. And they're trying to goad you and make you feel bad and get you down. Don't you know? And so and so got a new car yesterday, and you're driving this rattle truck. Yeah. No, no, don't you know? Uh, that they just done a better house than you live in. Don't you know that they were called on the same three times, and you were only called one time to say. Uh, don't, don't, don't you know that in the church, Brother Marlon looks at them all the time, never looks at you. Don't you know? That, uh, no, 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 don't you know that they were chosen? That to work in that place and he bypassed you five times and then and, and called on them. Yes, I know it. Yay, I know it. Praise God. You know what that comes right back in the enemy's mouth. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, there's no surprises. Uh, they're not gonna put a surprise on you. And and uh, so Elisha said, uh, he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. In other words, I'm going to say this like I say it in the 20th century. Shut up. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, it, it was real nice language in the scriptures. Hold your peace. Yeah. Well, the way I would say that, I would just shut up. Praise God. Uh, an enemy coming at me, trying to go to me, trying to get the best of me. I, I wouldn't say hold your peace. I'd say shut up. Praise our God. I believe we need to tell the enemy to shut up right now. I said, I believe we need to tell the enemy to shut up right now. Amen. 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 Are, are we serving a good God? Yes. All right, then, enemy, shut up. Amen. Are we serving a mighty God? Yes. I said, are we serving a mighty God? Yes. All right, then, enemy, shut up. Praise our God. Right. Amen. Amen. Are we serving a God that delivers? Yes. Are we serving a God that delivers? Yes. Are we serving a God that delivers? Yes. All right, then, enemy, shut up. Praise our God. My God, my God. I'm going to get anointed here. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Don't you feel God stirring? I feel the Lord stirring. I thank God when the Holy Ghost begins to stir the church. Move in the church. Praise our God. So you tell the enemy, as Elisha did, and Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee. For the Lord has sent me to Jericho. Now Jericho was where they fought the battle of Jericho. And when they compassed the wall seven times, on the seventh day, they blew the trumpet of the Lord, and the walls fell down flat. Fell down flat. And uh, that was a miracle in itself. And those walls didn't crumble all the pieces and fall over the place, but they fell down flat. Uh, God just eradicated any part of their foundation and the walls of Jericho went down. So when we leave Bethel, where God then takes us out of joint, and we've been sanctified, and the hill of foreskins uh, is where we left the covering of the flesh, and now we're in our journey, we're following consistently, and we're going on in the Lord, and we're going from strength to strength, and glory to glory, yes. and prophecy to prophecy, and the word of God to the word of God, and we're living and we're acting and we're becoming that glorious church that is restoring and becoming bold of bold. Then you feel your sister's hurt. You know your brother's hurting. When one hurts, we all hurt. Somebody said, I believe in every church when somebody hurts everybody. No, not in all churches. And did you know there are some churches that do not have enough compassion in them, Amen. that the people do not hurt when others hurt. They don't feel when others feel. But I, I say in the New Testament church, if one bone in this church hurts, the rest of us will hurt. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 If one bone in this uh, cries, the rest of us will cry. If one bone in this rejoices, we will all rejoice. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because it's one body and it's one bone. And we're bone of each other's bone. Uh, verse 4 said, And Elisha said unto Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Oh, I believe God's working on some people right now yes. that are going to say, as the Lord liveth, 
at my soul limit. I will not leave the truth. I will not leave the covering. I will not leave the anointing. I will not leave the revelation. I am going to follow the revelation and the anointing and the covering and the kingdom of God that is coming to pass. Praise our God. Amen. I will not leave. You can't run me off. You will not run me out of here. I'll not let you run me out of here. I'll not let you cause me to leave. The Lord brought me here. I was talking to Brother Ron Taylor, who's been with us many years gone by, on the phone yesterday. And he said, Brother Marlowe, I know the Lord brought me to that church. I know the Lord uh, put me in that church. I know the Lord brought me there, and I'll be back. He said, I'll be back. Praise our God. Amen, Did you amen. know there's feet moving toward this place tonight? There are people it. coming here. There are prophets coming here. There's amen. evangelists coming here. There are teachers coming here. There are men of God coming here. I and it's going it. on because somewhere there's going to be a reproduction of an Elisha ministry yes. that's going to get a double portion. Yes. Praise our God. Amen. I said they're going to get a double portion. Amen. 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 It is definitely a double portion. It is isn't enough to have just a good anointing. I'm going to double portion. I want the double portion. We're not to be satisfied with just what the church had. I had the anointing 50 years ago. I was anointed to preach. I was anointed to say. I was anointed to worship God. But I am now going on from Gilgal to Bethel to Jericho because I want that double portion. Praise the name of the Lord. Heal of my son of my God. Heal of my son of my God. Heal of my son of my God. Yea, said the Lord, I'm speaking. 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 Praise our God. Because there is a double portion. And he knew there was. Elisha knew there was. Elisha knew that he could not uh, leave Elijah. He had to follow him. And he said, as a soul. And, and if you get that revelation in this assembly right here, this assembly will bloom and blossom from your persistence and from your revelation and from your desire. And if, you get, uh, if you're given a job to do in the assembly, you'll do it. You'll be there. You'll be in place. No matter if it's in the dining room, young people, band, orchestra, choir, uh, down here in the seats, faithful saints praying around the altar, uh, you'll, you'll be consistent with it. Eldership, uh, ministry, because here, I'll go over one more verse or so, and, and uh, let them, the Lord, uh, seal this in your spirit. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho, uh, verse 5, came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Lord will take away thy master uh, from thy head today? That was the second time. And he answered, Yea, I know it holds you your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two, the, they too went off. Elisha would not leave Elijah. When you, uh, Jacob said in Genesis, the 30th chapter, verse 27, he said to Laban, he said, that is Laban said to Jacob, Laban said to Jacob, I have learned by experience. Yes. I have learned by experience that I am blessed because of thee. Laban said to uh, Jacob, I have learned by experience I am blessed because of thee. Blessed are you when you find out who blesses you enough to let you go on with God and not fall by the wayside. I thank God for the saints. I thank God for the ministers that have helped me to get here tonight and say for 71 years I have sought to go from Gilgal yes, over to Bethel, amen. over to uh, over to uh, uh, jo over uh, to the uh, Jericho, and then over to the Jordan. I didn't get here by myself. No. I'll tell you right now. This man right here wasn't smart enough, strong enough. 
Somebody help me. Many people help me. Many men of God help me. Oh, I thank God for the minister that walked into me and said, Brother John, don't fall by the wayside now. Come on, let's go another step. Oh, I thank God for the hoary head of the saints that said to me, Brother John, Brother Marlowe, don't stop here. Go on. Oh, I thank God for the elder that said we love you, Brother Marlowe. Take another step. Get up and go. Rise up again. Praise the name of the Lord. None of us got here by ourselves. We're bone with each other's bones. And we're flesh with each other's flesh. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So uh, uh, the final setting here was, and 50 men uh, of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view far off, and they too stood by Jordan. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, that, that, that didn't change uh, the scenario at all. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together, the Anoni, and smote the waters, and they were divided uh, hither and thither, so they too went over on the dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon thee. And he said, Thou hast asked a good thing. Praise God. A hard thing, rather. A hard thing. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it's a hard thing to get a double portion. It's a hard thing to receive a double anointing. It's a hard thing. Praise God. But nevertheless, everyone say nevertheless. 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 Praise our God. He said, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. So the dividing line is that if you're there, when the anointing is going up, and you're seeing the anointing, and you're following, and you've been true and faithful, then you stand the right to have a double portion. Praise the name of the Lord. I want the double portion. I thank God for the double portion. I praise God I can have the double portion. Oh, I'm looking for the double portion in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Brother Marlowe, or Brother Marlowe, don't you know? No, 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 watch out, watch out. You better follow, you better go. Don't let anything, anybody, discourage you. Stay where the anointing is. Elijah had the anointing. And he said, Elisha, you've asked for a double portion. That's even more than you have right here with me. But if you're with me, when you see me taken up, it will be granted. Well, let's see in the next verse or so. And he said, uh, verse 11, and it came to pass, and they still went on. Oh, I love that. I'm, I can't let you buy it without it. All right, repeat with me. Repeat with me, verse 11. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. This is just a Wednesday night, Brother Marlowe. Oh, no, 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 no. It's going to come to pass. It could come to pass here tonight. Some night, somewhere, sometime. That double portion is going to come back to a body of people that are contending for it. Praise the name of the Lord. Why not tonight? Why not tonight? Why not, tonight? Why not right now? Why not here? If not here, when? If not now, when? When? Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Why not? Why not? Praise our God. Praise our God. Verse 11, and it came to pass as they still went on. I see they didn't quit. They didn't fall out. Movements didn't bother them pulling up, coming their going. Movements rising, heroes coming, men being eulogized, men being given the glory that should have been given to God. All the trouble that's in the church, out of the church, all the things that happen, all the flesh, all the carnality. Yeah. No, 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 none of that. None of that. None of that. None of that. 
All the years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, go back. Oh my God, I thought that. You know, when I was when I was 17, I had the uh, brashness. Oh God has chastised me so for that. I told Brother Roberts, I said, Brother Roberts, you've been laboring all these years in Bradenton, turn me loose in Fort Myers, Florida, and I'll build a church three times the size of this church in the next year. Oh, did I have egg on my face the rest of my life. Praise the name of the Lord. Three years later, I had a sawdust floor and a few people, and uh, Brother Roberts just looked at me and said, son, don't open your mouth so quick. He said, remember, only God can build a house. If the Lord doesn't build a house, it can't be built. Did you know, it's going to be up to God to get us from where we're all right, where we're going. We better praise Him. We better give Him the glory. We better start shouting. Praise God. To Him be the glory. Quit giving God glory to them. Give it to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Give it the glory that belongs to God to men. Give it to God. Give it to God. Jesus said, Thine is the glory. Didn't take it himself. Thine is the glory. And here he said, in verse 11, I'll get out of here. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. Someone said, did Elisha really see that? I think he saw the most fiery chariot he never looked at. That's where he started God. You mean that Elisha saw a fiery chariot and horses on fire and a fiery chariot? That's what he saw. The Bible said he saw it. And it parted them asunder. It parted them asunder. Praise God. And, and, uh, and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two places. But the latter end of a, the eleventh verse said, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Praise God. Praise uh, verse 13 said, he took up also the mantle of Elijah yes. and fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also had smitten the waters, they parted thither and thither, and Elisha went over. Praise our God. What a story for us in the scriptures. What an example. What a picture. So we better go from our Gilgal to our Bethel and on uh, to the Jordan. Uh, and, and Jericho, the Jordan, and get this double portion that belongs to the church. Yes. Praise God. So may the Lord use this message to stir your heart, to stir your spirit, and to let you at least say, I can, I can, I can be an overcomer. I can get a double portion. Praise God. I can find my place in the house of God and be used of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to receive our offering and we're going to give God uh, what belongs to Him right now. And I hope you've enjoyed the message. It's gone down in your spirit and you've gotten some good things. And we want to pray for the sick and we want to pray for the afflicted and we want to pray for all of God's family everywhere in every condition and every place that they may be victorious in Christ. Praise God. All of our needs here in the local church. All of our needs. All of our needs in the body of Christ. The Lord knows about them. We repeat the ones we know about. Um, we want to pray especially uh, for those that have asked special prayer. Um, Renee, how's your mother? Is she all right up in there? She's at step down. So they moved her from ICU to just a regular room. And she stayed there for a couple of days. Right. But we'll keep praying for Renee's mother in the state of Georgia. That God will be with her, Pat, Pat Walker, and um, help her in every way. And uh, we'll pray for those here in the local uh, church that we're aware that sick and afflicted and those that might be away on trips. And there are several on journeys, and they'll come back in a few days and be with us after completing their vacations. 
pray for them that God will watch over them. I thank God for this wonderful group tonight that's here. Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. Just friend that we're glad you stayed over. Uh, we, we, our heart is with you and uh, the homecoming of your daughter, Noel, and um, Wade, well, Wade, she went to be with the Lord. Right. And she is with the Lord. Yes. She's in the uh, hands of God and uh, the resurrection of which Noel. Right. And God will be just with her Amen. and fair with her. Yes. And he knows her heart, knew her heart, and knows that she's in his presence now, in the presence of the resurrection, the promise of the resurrection. Yes. So, Sister uh, Edna, we we offer our feelings and heart to you as the mother. But thank God, there's a lot of things been lifted of the load you were carrying. Amen. And now, Amen. you don't have to carry that any longer. Right. But your daughter is asleep in the arms of the Lord. Praise God. Let's just still remember Edna and say, God, give her strength. And the rest of the family as well. And my goodness, wonderful group here on Wednesday night. House well filled. And people here to praise the Lord and worship the Lord. And before we uh, go any further, uh, lift your hands with your pastor. And let's begin to say, Lord, bless the people. Lord, heal the sick. Lord, look down upon the church. Lord, give us that double portion. Lord, give us that double portion. Give us that latter rain, the anointing of God that will be with those that follow from Gilgal, Lord, on to Bethel, and go on, Lord, past each journey of the step we're taking. Oh, God, be with us as the walls of Jericho fall down. Be with us, Lord, as we go on to the Jordan and smite it and say the God of Elijah. Be with us tonight. And that double portion, the latter rain falls and the glory of God comes. And we go on and follow on to know the Lord. Oh, Jesus, tonight, in every heart, every life, sanctify, set apart, heal, deliver, Make us whole. Praise. Encourage us. Lift us up. Give us joy. And give us peace. Yes. And we'll just serve you. And we'll give you the praise for these good things that you've done for us. Praise the name praise. of the Lord. I want somebody to give him a praise offering. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to praise the Lord because he dwells in the praise. Amen, amen. My God, I think, I think tonight, I think tonight, I think tonight, what will it be when we as an Elisha ministry, following, following consistently the Elijah ministry. The Elijah ministry is a picture of the early church. The Elisha ministry is a picture of the latter day church. And the Jordan is a picture of the powers of religion and world powers, the beast, uh, the governments of the world, uh, the conditions of the world, the four winds uh, that are going to blow upon the earth. That's Jordan, that there will be a people have to cross that and go across. And the only way we'll cross over those four winds and withstand the effects of the four winds that will blow upon the earth and try to destroy uh, it will be uh, with the anointing of that battle yes. that comes from Elijah. Yes. Yes. See the teachings of the apostles and prophets yes. and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, that's the mantle. That's the right. spirit of the Holy Ghost yes. that fell 2,000 years ago, that's Elijah's mantle. Right. But there's an Elisha yes. that's going to follow yes. from Gilgal yes. to Bethel Amen. and on to the walls of Jericho, oh, yes. and then right on over uh, to Jordan, the, the Jordan itself. And we will be able uh, to have the mantle handed to us. And there will be an anointing. That, uh, that anointing will be the same anointing Amen. that carried the early church, yes. raised the dead, healed the sick, yes. opened the eyes of the blind, Amen. praised the name of the Lord. Praise and we'll take that mantle before the coming of Jesus and we'll smite the powers of the four winds 
uh, the Jordan, the flesh life of the world, the government of the world, and the church will prevail and not the world. And the anointing of ministry will prevail and not the world. There is an Elisha. There is an Elisha. Yes. And Elisha is coming right now to take the mantle that fell 2,000 years ago yes. upon the early church. Praise our God. Praise and that Elisha Praise is going to smite the door. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 It doesn't matter what the enemy has coming at the church. It doesn't matter what the world is offering. It doesn't matter what sin is doing. It doesn't matter the conditions. There is a mantle yes. that was in the Elijah ministry. Yes. Praise God. Amen. The only difference is it's going to be a double portion. Yes. Of what they had 2,000 years yes. ago. Yes. We'll have placed that yes. in the glory of the Lord. My yes. God, I'm so excited tonight. I can't stand yes. it. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to shout up here a minute. Glory. I'm going to have to praise the Lord a minute. Praise. Pardon me. Praise. Go ahead. Sit there. Do what you want to do. Just do what you want to do. I'm going to have a personal revival. I'm here. I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to praise Him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. said to this man, get in your car and go to Bradenton, Florida. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not going to let the testimony of what God is doing die in this place. Praise the name of the Lord. We are living in the most glorious day since Calvary. And I'm going to shout about it tonight. And let the Holy Ghost use me. And I pray the Holy Ghost will use you and get a hold of God. I said, get a hold of God. Get a hold of God. Praise the name of the Lord. But God is a good God and He's on time. So may the Lord bless you as we uh, tonight go back and give our offering. And I, I, I hope the service will not just drop like that because I've been up here for about 45 minutes or more, 50 minutes, something like that. And, and I hope the service won't just drop, but we'll wind it up in a flourish uh, with somebody being an enthusiastic uh, testifier a singer and say let's go out here shouting tonight. I, in fact, I would like to see the crowd shouting on the parking lot tonight. Hey. Amen. I'd like the glory of God to fall here so great until we go through those doors and the anointing of God hits us before we can unlock our car and get in. Praise God. Wake the neighbors up if you want to. They wake us up with that crazy music. They're playing. Uh, I come down this street with a bicycle and a can music of some kind that wakes me up. Uh, uh, well, I don't mind waking them up with a shout unto Jehovah. Amen. A shout unto Jesus.
In the 19th chapter of Exodus, the Lord said to Moses, You see what I did to the Egyptians. And he was referring to the crossing of the Red Sea. He said, And how I held you up in eagles' wings. He said, If you will hear my voice, and obey my covenant, yes, yes. I will make you a peculiar people unto me. He said, now go tell this to the children of Israel. At the time that the word peculiar was used, it didn't mean strange or odd, but it meant that you belonged exclusively to someone or somebody. And the Lord wanted the children of Israel to belong exclusively to him. In one place it said he's a jealous God. And he told the Egyptians, so Moses gathered the Egyptians together and told them, and the child, the Egyptians said, we'll do it. We will do it. We'll do it. Doesn't that kind of sound like today? We'll do it. We'll do it. And the Lord told Moses, you gather them around Mount Sinai. Yes. And I'm going to come down, and I want them to know up that I'm with you, Moses. That's it. He said, now you put a border up around Mount Sinai, and they cannot touch the mount. That's it. If they touch the mount, they'll be put to death. Yes. If an animal touches the mount, they should have a spear pass through them, and they would be put to death. But he said, and Moses told the children, he said, we'll have three days, and you sanctify yourself, you change your clothes. And the three days passed, or at the third day, Moses told them, all right, we'll gather around the mount, keep uh, back uh, below the border, behind the border. And the Spirit of the Lord came, and uh, the Lord had told Moses, I will come in the black clouds, in the darkness. And that mount began to quake. And the Spirit of the Lord came. Thank God. Praise God. There was a, a trumpet that sounded. The trumpet sounded and gave a long, loud noise. And the Spirit of the Lord came on Mount Sinai and he shook it. And the people were sore afraid. And the Spirit of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, cried out in that darkness to Moses. In Revelations 12, we're told that we didn't come to Mount Sinai, but we come to Mount Zion, yes. the city of the living yes. God, yes. the heavenly yes. Jerusalem, uh, to an innumerable company of angels. Yes. In the 17th chapter of Revelation, it talks about the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. Yes. Yes. And it said, they that are with him are called, called chosen, chosen, and, and faithful. And faithful. When Jesus was on earth, he walked by the seashore, and he saw his, the disciples that did it with his disciples, and he said to them, Come thou and follow me. And immediately they left everything they had and followed Jesus and were worth it with him during his three and a half years of ministry. The Lord calls us. He calls us. And then he chooses us. Amen. And we then must choose him. Amen. Uh, if I can get my thoughts together. Mm -hmm. Whenever uh, uh, whenever I was growing up, we, my mother, and my sister Ruth that had to receive the Holy Ghost, my sister Ruth and my two nieces, and then another uh, woman in our church, a young girl, by the name of Carol Lee. <coughs> remember her? My mother's house was always open to the people of the Lord. We all lived there together, and at the end of the day, we'd come in from work, and mother would have dinner ready, and then we'd clean up. And you know what we did? We took our Bibles and our notebook, and we sat down at the dining room table, and we discussed the message that we had heard. And we all, we, it was put a foundation in my life that I will always be grateful for. It's like that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the uh, different people heard this, but they gave different, uh, little different slants on it. And that's how we would do is we would take our Bible and sit down. And I thought, you know, that's something that I think we always lost in today's life. But it put an ingredient in our heart and in our life. And uh, Carol wrote a course and it said, 
you were just one of the thousands. Do you remember that? You were just one of the thousands, but now you're one of the few. From among the multitude, yeah. the Lord has chosen you. Lord. He's granted to you the privilege to see what he's to do. The human race keeps racing on. Aren't you glad he's chosen you? Yeah. We live in a day that I believe is nearing the coming of Jesus again. I, I don't believe it's tomorrow, but I believe it's nearing the coming of Jesus. All prophecies in the Bible, all the things, uh, the signs point to it can't be a long time <laughs> until he comes. And I want to be called, chosen, and faithful. I want to choose him as the disciples left everything they had and followed Jesus. Because I want that to be in my life that I will follow the master. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise God. Praise God. Be the 
of the Lord. Don't you feel something stirring in your soul? Oh, blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Don't you feel something stirring in your soul? I do mind. Praise God. Praise God. I don't think the Lord wants to send us home right now. I, I think He wants us to praise Him. And to give Him more praise. Give Him more glory. Give Him more honor. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't the Lord good? Isn't the Lord good? Just lift up closer, I hear him say, Don't go look far off and lose your way. Just keep on trying.
Brother Rhodes, you want us to pray for you tonight? And uh, ask God to help you? Praise God. No, do you want us to pray for you? Sure. All right, then. You're the, you're the candidate. I'm asking. Praise God. Brother James, we're going to pray for Brother James. Pray for Brother James. Ask God to help Brother James. Because Brother James said to me, um, Brother Marlowe, I feel like when I had my accident, as it was, and I was smitten, that something was taken out of me. Mm -hmm. And I want it back. Yes. Yes. Amen. Oh, I want the strength I had with God. Yes. Yes. That again. Yes. Yes. And I believe tonight if we ask, Amen. it Amen. shall be given. Amen. I preached on that message of the anointing of Elijah. Yes. Amen. The early church falling on Elisha. Oh, yes. The latter rain church. Right. Yes. And I believe tonight this man that died, they thought he might be dead when they got to him outside. And he went through weeks without his strength, without his memory, without his mind, but yet God has raised him. Brought him back. And he said to me, Brother Marlo, I want that zeal back again. I want that desire back again. I want to feel the Lord, my mind quicken, where I can study the scriptures and I can remember the word of God. Do you believe God will hear, Brother Bibbon? I believe he will. I believe he will. And we're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we lay the hands of faith upon Brother Bibbon. We believe the mantle. Be Lord, we believe the mantle, oh God, that was upon the early church is upon us tonight. And in this place, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by strength, it's by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, let the mantle of God come back upon him and bring another day. And raise him up and let him be filled with the joy of the Lord and the peace of God and the quickening of the Holy Ghost. And we believe it tonight, and we believe it tonight, and we believe it tonight, and we accept it in the name of Jesus. You shall lay hands on the sick and the child of God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I say right now the miracle is done, the witness is back, and Jesus has heard it, and the glory of the Lord will be upon this man and quicken him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Give him the praise for the day. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. In Jesus' name, we believe it tonight. Amen. Amen. All right. I believe the work is done. In the name of Jesus, I believe the work is done. Let's pray for a mighty week in the Lord. Tomorrow night in Port Charlotte, Dan leaves at 6, and then over the weekend here, Let's pray that God will just be with us and help us and help all the rest of his people. Everywhere his people are, that he'll be with them and help them. In the name of Jesus, invite somebody to church with you over Saturday and Sunday. And go to Port, uh, Port Charlotte if you can tomorrow evening. And let's raise Brother Stewart, Stewart's hands up. Glad to see Brother Matthew Knopp. Sister Teresa and uh, Matt Jr. here cornbread with us tonight. Uh, we're happy to see them back from Pittsburgh, aren't we? And we miss them while they were gone. Back home tonight with us. Sister Eva, it's good to see you back tonight. Praise God after your trip. 
All right, may the Lord bless you Brother real Bob. good. Tomorrow is Sister Fran and Brother Bob's 50th <coughs> wedding anniversary. So congratulations. Say that again. I didn't get that. Brother Bob told, her, told me, told us. Well, he told me too, but you say it. But she said only 49, not 50. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not right now. He can't, he, he can't Only 49. <laughs> but it's approaching 50. <laughs> Next time we will say 50. Praise God. Amen. Well, congratulations. The rest of you are having anniversaries and uh, birthdays. Congratulations to all of you. Praise God. May the Lord bless you. you shake hands with at least five. Our six people around here and say the Lord bless you.